thank you for joining us at the Lehman College Art Gallery. Uh, I'm Bartholomew Bland. I'm the executive director of the gallery. And I'm joined today, I've been lucky enough to be joined by a Lehman alumni. Uh, this is, I'm joined today by Natalie Colette Wood, who is a practicing artist uh, and also works at the Bronx Children's Museum. And uh, we are going to be talking about uh, her work uh, and specifically her work that's going to be appearing uh, in an upcoming exhibition that's being jointly planned by Lehman College Art Gallery uh, and Wave Hill in the Bronx, a show called Eco Urgency, which will be on view at Wave Hill in the fall of 2020, and then uh, at Lehman College in a, a sequence, a sequel, as it were, uh, in the winter of uh, 2021. Uh, a little bit about our uh, a little bit about our guest today. Uh, Natalie lives and works in New York City. She is a current artist in residence at the Andrew Freeman Home, located in the Bronx, uh, and she earned an MFA from Herbert H. Lehman College and a BFA from the School of the Arts uh, of the Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, she's had solo exhibitions at Freight and Volume Gallery in New York, at Natural Phenomenon uh, at Andrew Friedman Home in the Bronx. Uh, and a show called Nothing Lasts Forever, uh, also at the Andrew Friedman uh, home. Uh, she did an exhibition called Futuristic Fossil at Chasma in New York. And Wood's work has been included in exhibitions such as the AIM Biennial, that's Artists in the Marketplace here at uh, the Bronx Museum, uh, here in the Bronx at the Bronx Museum, uh, and many other exhibitions uh, around the city uh, and around the region. So thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, let's just start. I, I was very curious. Uh, uh, look at your bio. I know you're from uh, Las Vegas, uh, and I we were talking sort of uh, keeping things sort of on an ecological uh, profile. Um, I, I'm interested about how growing up in the desert uh, impacted you as a child, the natural landscape around you, and how that sort of collided with the man-made landscape. Yeah, so I, I grew up in Las Vegas, which is a very dry and um, it's a desert climate. And I spent a lot of time um, in that in, in the desert, but also in a man-made environment on a golf course. And I would spend a lot of time riding my bike and roller skating in these environments. And I developed this really, this love of being in nature, because I'm an only child and being by myself in nature. And I really, um, you know, the desert became a very magical place to me, but also a very terrifying place to me because you could get overheated. It was, it, there was always a lot of warnings of, you know, the, of the heat <laughs> exhaustion in Vegas. Um, so I developed this deep respect for our environment and how I interacted with it and um, the, the flora and fauna that are located in it and just this, um, this never ending wonder of what was that and what is, you know, what's over here and who lives here and things like that. So it's, it, it's definitely influenced my practice going forward. That's interesting. So you did your undergraduate degree at the Art Institute at Chicago, uh, the school yeah, there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what was that, what was that like? What, what was your, how did that influence you? I mean, how did that sort of transform your idea of being an artist? Yeah, I mean, the Art Institute of Chicago is amazing. And, you know, going to school there, you're connected to the museum. Um, so I, I spent a lot of time and I started getting involved in plein air painting. And again, with the landscape in Chicago, that was very influential. And it's called the Windy City and just dealing with the natural elements of Chicago. And, you know, then, you know, having lunch in the museum were these two factors that just really influenced my work and my love of Turner and, you know, yes, um, Anselm Kiefer and just, you know, walking through those galleries just really influenced me to this love of, of, of painting and, you know, the painting studios and what that meant. These kind of- You, do sense, you do sense a weight of history there, don't yes, you? Yes, it's it's just very, yeah, and it's like, who went there? And you, and you feel a, a very big weight of, um, of that, but also Chicago has this really interesting history and the way the city is positioned on the lake and um, mm. the natural elements there are very uh, tough, you could say. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, severe, <laughs> severe weather. It is severe weather. And then um, 
one of my biggest loves that I started in Chicago was of Joan Mitchell and her idea of the snow and this quietness that um, Chicago has when it is snowing and or when there's a nor'easter or a blizzard or something um, like really rang true to me as like the polar opposite of the desert in a way, <laughs> you know. Uh, that's interesting. Does, yeah. uh, does uh, Chicago have a, a wonderful Joan Mitchell collection? I don't think I was they do. Of they that, do. But... Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very interested. You, you mentioned Turner um, yeah. uh, and, and a lot of his stormy scapes. I, I, I just wanted to sort of do a little bit of contrasting, maybe talking about your historical influences. Jump a little ahead in your career, uh, uh, you know, a good piece ahead of your career, because I was looking at your Ocean View series. Yeah. Um, and thinking a lot about those storms in there. And I could see that some there's some Turner elements in those. Yeah, things. yeah, I love these kind of, I mean, I fell in love with Turner because he has these kind of epic scenes. They, they seem like heavy metal songs or something like they're so intense. And I think I love that drama in his work. And I always tried to, um, impersonate it in my work as yeah. best. <laughs> like I just tried to yeah. bring that bring that drama um to um to my work and and just like how um you know these storms and just these things that these um it's kind of like a like a symphony or like a dance composition that would come this this um this um this dance with nature almost so that's wonderful um and then after you uh after you left chicago and came to new york what kind of gap was there between your undergraduate uh degree and coming to lehman to yeah. get your MFA? Um, so when i came to the i it was very funny so i graduated from the art institute and i was like very worried about money and and getting a job it's very hard right after your bfa and you're not a very established being, um artist so i applied for a job at the bronx va making facial prosthetics and that's how i came to the bronx and i spent two years sculpting facial prosthetics at the bronx va um i think it's now called the james j peters medical center on kingsbridge road um in in collaboration with Columbia University. And it was a really interesting time of working with vets and, you know, witnessing the effects of war and disaster, but also, uh, you know, helping them. Sometimes art is a very, um, you know, it's a very selfish thing. You know, you're doing, you're making paintings for yourself and um, it felt nice to do something for someone else. So it was, it was an interesting two year break. But what happened was um, I ended up just making a lot of dentures at the end of it because there's not a lot of patients <laughs> who need facial prosthetics. And it was kind of like the job, there wasn't really any job aspects after. And I just, you know, I was living very close to Lehman and I had opportunities to go back to Texas, but I wanted to stay, stay in New York. So Lehman just seemed kind of like One. the next <laughs> perfect thing, but there was a two year gap. <laughs> Uh, uh, just next door. Yeah. Um, I, well, I, was, I had noticed that you had done this with facial, this had this work with facial prosthetics. And I was wondering whether working with prosthetics had, do you feel like sharpened your ability to portray anatomy? Uh, I mean, was that sort of a continuation of your study? Were you, did you think a lot about anatomy in that sense? bit um i'm more into camouflage <laughs> um you know in my work i use a lot of collage and it's a lot of this like what is the photograph what is painted and i love that play um in the work um and playing with color and um you know that was where i really got interested in the in the prosthetics was i was really good at max max uh, matching the color to the patients and that's where it really that's where you have that like seamless look um the, the sculpting mm -hmm. is you know it's a it's a, you have to be a good sculptor obviously but the color is where it's like <laughs> so that really oh, influenced yeah. my work um being you know really being attuned to color and just this idea of camouflaging and and hiding what's real and what's fake and so, yeah <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, you graduated, uh, did you graduate from Lehman in 2009? So yes. you've been out for 12 years with MFA. That's a, that's a good uh, a good period of time. And then you were you're then a professional artist. What was your work looking like at that time uh, at, at, when you were graduating? I mean, yeah. was it very, very different than what you're doing? Now? It was, it was, it was. It was um, very abstract, and but still rooted in fictional places. Like, but it was very abstract abstract and in, influenced by the same things like the environment and natural disasters and and um, things falling apart but it was through the language of abstraction rather than the environment mm -hmm. and then slowly that started to change um, the further I was out of grad school. Very interesting. Now, yeah. I sort of first became aware of you because uh, of faculty actually at Lehman who were, were recommending your work uh, and I saw your big solo show at the Andrew Friedman home. You'll remember that's the uh, first time we met. Um, and I was very taken with your work in, um, and how it related to the natural world, particularly some of the chairs, I think, that you had on, yeah. uh, on you. Uh, th could you tell me a little bit about those and, and why the sort of plants and the chairs together? How did that, how did that sort of come about in your work? Um, well, that piece, it's very much influenced by Andrew Friedman and these kind of abandoned spaces. And Andrew Friedman um, is a mansion in the Bronx that um, has been abandoned for a couple of years, some years, but um, is now was now transformed into an art space. And my studio is there. And with having my studio there, you would stumble upon the leftovers of these rooms. And I always kind of fantasized, like, what would happen if, you know, um, it was, uh, it, nature would just take over and just take over these rooms and what would happen if nobody was here for 50, for 50 years and that just kind of turned into creating a dinner scene and then they just kind of multiplied and <laughs> kept making them. Um, so they're kind of these, um, these pieces of furniture of, that were like left over that's been like swallowed by nature and taken over. So, um, they're that's also- Some of them are actually- Say, okay. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was also influenced by um, North Brother Island and South Brother Island, um, which are two islands very close to the Bronx. And um, I believe it's North Brother Island has been abandoned and is now a bird um, sanctuary. And it's basically where they took Typhoid Mary and there's these like abandoned hospitals in them. And the photos are so amazing where trees are like growing through these spaces. And, you know, thinking of Andrew Friedman and what was left over, but also thinking of those spaces of where nature has really just taken over these um, um, constructed places and taken them back. And that idea was really interesting to me. Very interesting. And now some of these chairs, I mean, they've sort of more, you can actually show, you've actually shown them outside, right? Uh, the, yeah. uh, some of your plants. Yeah, I've showed them outside at Montefiore Medical Center and at um, Lehman, Co not Lehman College, at Andrew Friedman. Um, and it's, I've, I've been doing, it's a series of work that's been growing for the past, I would say five years now. Um, not literally or metaphorically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Both, <laughs> they just keep just keep multiplying and growing, um, and it's interesting. Now, are you using moss? Are, are you using mosses in these? Uh, yeah. Is that where they could be dormant and then they could, you could reactivate them? Yeah, yeah. So um, basically, the longer they've kind of existed, the more of like a whole ecosystem is going on in the chairs, and it's kind of its own world. Um, and I really noticed that at Andrew Friedman um, as the summer progressed, and you know there were, you know, the cats would you know find their homes there, and bugs, and it would be this whole ecosystem um, within its own. But then as winter comes, it does they do kind of go dormant and then come back. In the summer, mm. so, um, you were talking a little bit about Andrew Friedman and some of these other abandoned sites around the Bronx. Okay. I'm wondering, it's sort of, I, I mean, does that aesthetic of the poetry of decay, uh, you'll see it in uh, Roman uh, depictions of Rome in the 18th century by people like Panini, where the, uh, the ruins or the sort of classical ruins have fallen in, or you'll, you know, the romance of that, uh, sort of looking back at, at ancient things that have, that have uh, sort of come, the natural world has started to take over. Is that sort of kind of 
of romanticism, uh, historic, in, in art history, a big influence on you? Yes, definitely, definitely. That kind of poetry and how, you know, something so beautiful can fall apart and then seem beautiful at the same time. And um, that drama, kind of like Turner, you know, going back to that, like the, like the, the shipwreck or the, you know, is um, so beautiful at the same time. So yeah, definitely all those The things. disaster of the sublime. Yes, yes. So yes. All, the, yeah. all inspiring terror. Is, yes. <laughs> And so, uh, so uh, going back to that series uh, that I was mentioning earlier, that you did the Ocean View series, that of the of your painting work seems to be the most explicit in terms of these extreme weather events. I was wondering if you could talk about whether you were uh, that was in two thousand seventeen. Were you influenced by the cha the reports about changing weather and uh, on our ecology? What were the the motivators for that series? Yeah, I mean, I think that series was really influenced by nostalgia and this idea that you know things are this I, this idea in the news that things should go back. I think there was a lot of cool um, talk like there is now of going back to coal or like, you know, fracking and things like that. And like just how um, there was just this disregard for climate change and global warming, um, which isn't that much different in five years than our current <laughs> climate right now. Um, you know, there's this definite, um, thought I think in in people that that this isn't existing so it was just kind of a reaction to that and of how nature can kind of um, bite back in a way or um, you know it's something um, to be um, uh, very um, appreciative of. And yes. Well it's interesting you talk about nature biting back um, because I, I'm always very interested in this idea of uh, kind of earth being personified, mother nature being personified. Yeah. And it's all, it's very often uh, in, in, you know, popular literature, sort of, there's this weeping mother earth yes. or something. And, and, and the fact that the earth is really totally neutral about whether we live or die. And yeah. it's, uh, you know, it, it, the nature is not going to mourn our loss necessarily. It's just gonna sort of change inexorably yeah. one way or the other. Yeah, like it's just gonna keep going. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way or the other. So, yeah. um, what are some of the other sort of natural phenomenons when you think about your work that uh, that have in, in ways nature has influenced your work? Yeah. Um, so definitely, they're mostly like environments. The um, you know the the northern lights is definitely a big influence in terms of color. Um, the tsunami that happened was just mm -hmm. very influential to me, you know, um, that, um, and just kind of these disasters that we didn't see or this natural warming of our climate that, you know, didn't really happen before. Um, and just starting to take note of that and take note of, um, how the climate is changing and definitely, um, the hurricane in New Orleans and things like that. Like as I got out of school and became a little bit more conscious of the environment, those kind of re, um, more recent um, events influenced my work. Interesting. And what are you working on right now? What am I working? I'm working on a series of collages since COVID hit. Um, you know, everything I, I was painting, I've always painted very large and I've kind of um, gone back to some smaller collages. Everything always starts with collage for me. And then I move into painting or a video or, or those collages inspire um, sculptures. So I've been focusing on making collages and um, these collages that are, have the, um, an interaction of interiors and natural landscapes where, you know, maybe, um, you know, flowers are growing through an interior landscape and, you know, disrupting something and basically where nature and urban environments are cohabitating together um, and they don't quite gel in the normal way. So they kind of have this surreal quality to them. So that's... that's well, that's interesting. I, I, was, I was noting on your web website that a lot of your most recent 2021 work has been smaller. Uh, yes. Has your studio been closed? I mean, have you been able to access it or? It's, it's been difficult because I do have a full-time job um, at, the, you know, at the Children's Museum. Um, and the hours have been cut because their funding has been cut. So it's just been a little bit more difficult to get there. And it has been closed for a while. And, you know, with COVID, it's just a little bit more difficult to navigate a, um, 
um, just traveling around, I think, you know, <laughs> like, I think everybody's more homebound. Um, but, yeah. but I'm itching, um, since, you know, the spring is coming, <laughs> I'm itching to get out and I have, um, the chairs are coming out in a week and they're going to be in yeah. a, in an installation, um, in a hardware store on 125th street in a, like a, oh. a, um, new, um, experimental space. So that's nice. And so I'll be able to work bigger and kind of expand out. So that's something I'm really looking forward to. Uh, <laughs> That'll be wonderful. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, and that's sort of a, an interesting um, uh, non-traditional art space to be installed in a hardware store. I wonder whether you've ever considered garden shops or uh, that kind of place. Where they so that's be. the funny thing is that this hardware store has a garden shop and a cafe in it and they've had to kind of rearrange things and their back space um, which is also a loading dock um, is kind of like this um, temporary exhibition space. It's very interesting, mm -hmm. but it's something that's very common for artists now in terms of COVID because all of there's so much vacant real estate right now that, you know, artists can kind of take over a space for a period of time and do a project and, you know, not have this like um, very expensive overhead with a commitment and a lease and, you know, like this whole dive into the <laughs> Now, have you sold these to, uh, you know, people with gardens that want to have them as sculpture? I'm assuming they're not comfortable to sit in. No, I haven't, but <laughs> people want to rent them. Oh, I see. Interesting. Uh, yeah, enough. no, they've, they've been in photo shoots and stuff, but I wish they would buy them. <laughs> uh, buy one, yes. Very, uh, 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 yeah, well, are they, are they durable enough where they could exist? To of year round yeah, outside yeah, but they're ephemeral it's like you know if you buy you know it's like the plant next to you you have to take care of it you know it's so it's kind of like they they have a life of their own um but uh cycle. yeah they have a cycle and they can be replanted and you can you know add additions so they they have their own life cycle I and tell me this, um, uh, because I seem to remember the chairs that I saw had a very Baroque kind of frame. Are you thinking a lot about the uh, infrastructure, the style of the chair that you're using? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think in a lot of my work, I'm using these these kind of like um, like Rococo or Baroque or like these symbols of wealth and, and status and kind of... Um, I guess tearing them apart or having nature kind of take over. And it's this kind of idea of those, those symbols always represent nostalgia for me or the way of the past and kind of this, um, mm -hmm. this back and forth with um, the way things were versus, you know, nature and kind of this ebb and flow between the two. So that I, I do, the more Baroque and elaborate the chairs are, I kind of love them. <laughs> That's interesting. Now, uh, you're going to be uh, working with us, as I mentioned, on our Eco Urgency show, which will be opening at Lehman. The Lehman Porch will be opening in early December of 2021. Um, uh, you know, our, we are very lucky to be in a beautiful Marcel Breuer building at uh, Lehman. You know the gallery well. Um, how do you think that, that that's, that's a very sort of high modernist kind of building? Yes. How do you think that might inspire or, or uh, impact the kind of site specific work you might plan for, yeah. for that space? Well, I remember in the gallery, there's these beautiful high ceilings and this beautiful architecture, dramatic architecture, really, in the gallery of these diagonals. And I'd love to, um, you know, inter work with that and integrate with the, um, have this dialogue with the architecture. And I've been experimenting with printing um, my work on scrims and chiffon and different fabric and how those um, you know, move and dance with um, with airflow and movement, but also, um, you know, thinking about that building and how you can really play with the with the space, with the architecture in that space and the and the uh, movement of that space because it has that really nice round center that it's kind of like oh, spiral. That's uh, that's interesting. Well, it's also sort of interesting to think about, uh, you know, the promise of that kind of modernism, 
versus some of the earlier historical styles you were talking about. Because I think some of those earlier historical styles, when they start to decay or the nature sort of takes over, there's a kind of romanticism about it. Yes. I think, you know, when high modernism starts to take that, it has a particularly tragic aspect to yes, it. I'm yes, yes, sure. sad. <laughs> So, yes, exactly. So the, the, the constant demand of maintenance is, uh, is in some ways the, you know, the that kind of modernism kind of demands a sort of high sheen, uh, yes. sort of buffed quality to it, yes. I think. A high operations budget. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, well, we are going to be looking forward to seeing uh, what you uh, come up with for the gallery and the installation uh, space. and. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to working with you this year and thinking about some of the ecological um, themes in your work that we might be able to bring forward. Yeah, me too. I, I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm very excited about the show. We'll urge everyone to come back and uh, when the gallery is open in full swing again and we'll have a full complement of public programs and it will be uh, wonderful to see you again in person. Yes, yes, in person. <laughs> it would be wonderful. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Natalie. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much, Bart. This was great. Thank you. Bye-bye.